Ever since I did a teardown of this uh, Emerald PPS2322 dual channel programmable power supply a couple of years ago, I had received quite a few requests on backing up the content of the firmware so that others with similar units can fix theirs if the EEPROMs fail. And for the longest time I did not have a proper EEPROM reader to do the backup. And my method, as I did when I backing uh, when backing up my Keithley 196 multimeters firmware, was to use a MCP23S17 port expander chip, along with an Arduino, to read from the EEPROM content. I will provide a link to that project below. So finally, I got myself a TL866A Mini Pro programmer, as it seems to support a lot of uh, chips on the market. And ever since Dave Jones reviewed it on the EV blog a few years back, a lot of people have had bought it and were pretty satisfied with it. I have to say though, it might just be me, but I have not had too much luck with it. And when I was trying to back up content from my WaveTech 395 arbitrary waveform generator out there, and uh, it did not work. And uh, the generator uses a, I believe, AT27C4096 EEPROM, which is uh, in PLCC44 packaging. And uh, it was supposed to be on the compatible list of this programmer, but nevertheless, it uh, could not detect the chip and thus could not program it successfully. Anyway, let me try to see if I can back up the EEPROM content inside this power supply. And if I remember correctly, this one uses a DIP packaging for the EEPROM, so hopefully it will just work. And since I have already done the teardown uh, a couple of years ago, and there are a lot of pictures online, so you can check them out on my blog. But uh, for this video, we're just going to take it uh, apart quickly and uh, identify the uh, board containing the firmware. And we will use this uh, TL866A to back up the firmware. Hopefully we can uh, uh, do that. And uh, then I will post the firmware on my website so that other people want to use it can download from there. And for those who have not seen the inside of this unit, here's what it looks like. And by the way, I did make some modifications to it, uh, namely adding a thermal controlled fan controller. And this unit came with a fan that uh, is basically constantly on. So when you are operating this, especially when the load is low, it's quite annoying to hear the fan noise. So anyway, so I added that, and as you can see, I have this uh, temperature uh, thermal sense. Sorry, I have this thermistor attached to the heatsink, and the board I just kind of mounted right here on the top. Now, for uh, that project, also I can provide a link below if you want to check it out now uh, you can uh, do so on my website anyway so the we, what we're concentrating on here is that uh, vertical board as you can see we have this uh, EEPROM uh, right on there so so I think what I'm gonna do is I this time I don't have to uh, take the whole board out I can just pry it out and uh, we'll see if we can read from that chip and here's the chip, and as you can see here, is the firmware V5. I assume that's the fifth version of that. And the checksum is 681, so we can use that to verify the chip after we read it. After lifting up this uh, uh, sticker a little bit, we can see that this is a uh, 27C512. So we should be able to use that uh, TL866A to read this chip. So let's give it a try. Okay, so now I just uh, plugged the chip in and uh, powered it up. So as you can see here, it uh, everything looks uh, okay. And I'm just going to fire up the Mini Pro programmer here. And sorry, I'm just recording the uh, screen directly and because it will be uh, uh, pretty quick, we'll be able to find out whether or not it worked. So for this, let's see. Um, I think I need to select the chip here. So I believe this is when last time I was trying with that uh, PLCC chip uh, that I mentioned earlier, it didn't work. So this time let's try, I think this is a um, 27C512. And uh, I don't believe the manufacturer matters that much, but this one is a TI part. So it's a TMS27C512. 
512. So that's the, our candidate here. So let's uh, do OK. And uh, let's do a read, shall we? No problem. It looks like everything is read successfully. And it seems like we got what we have here. The other thing that is interesting is that this checksum is uh, different than what we have on chip. Remember we said the checksum was uh, 681 from the sticker on the uh, the chip, but here it's a 692. So I'm not sure what the deal is. Let's try reading it again just to see if that changes. But I don't think it would change. So um, that's probably all right because we don't know whether or not uh, the original checksum was okay, was the correct one. So, yep, right now you can see we're still at the 6E92. So I would say that is the correct one. So now let me uh, save that. And uh, I will place this EEPROM image on my website. So those who wanted to give it a try, you can download it and uh, let me know if it works. And that's about what all I wanted to cover for this short video. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And do remember to share and subscribe, that helps the channel a lot. I will catch up with you next time.